also talk about the Students Loan Trust Fund and its Repayment Awareness Month. It was established in December 2005 to help make education accessible to many of us who were not able to fund ourselves whilst in school. But of course, after we've taken the loans, having to repay also becomes an issue. But maybe it's just because we don't understand what that loan is supposed to do in the first place. But to help us understand it more is the CEO of the Students Loan Trust Fund and the person of Mr. Nana Kweku J. Yebua. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Welcome to TV3 New Day. Uh, thank you. So let's start off by saying, because people seem to be confused as to whether the SNIT loan is the same as the Students Trust Loan Fund. Is it the same? It's not the same. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the confusion stems from the fact that, you know, um, the SNIT loan was taken over by the current, you know, student loan. Okay. So the student loan, as is currently, is under Ministry of Education. Right. It's different from the uh, SNIT loan. Okay. But how does, who qualifies to be accessible to the loan, and how do you even get the chance to get onto that payroll for this loan? Uh, if you, you have to be in tertiary uh, institution, okay. you have to be a Ghanaian, and the courses you are pursuing mm. has to be accredited. Okay. You have to be in an accredited institution pursuing an uh, accredited program. Mm. You have to be a Ghanaian. Okay. Yeah. But is it limited to only those who are in public inst tertiary institutions? It's both public and private. Okay. So it cuts across the whole of Ghana. Yep. It's not only in the capital cities also. No, in the whole of Ghana, we have uh, 119 mm. institutions, okay. both private and public, right. uh, on our portfolio. Okay. So after I've you know, accessed the loan, what are the repayment terms? How do I repay? After you access the loan, um, let's say you are pursuing a four-year program. Right. After the f you graduate from your program, mm. you have first year for uh, when you are doing your national service okay. you don't pay the loan then uh, the second so two years mm. after graduation then you start uh, the, to repay okay but usually i I'm, I'm interested in finding out how much is even giving and what is the criteria for the amount you give because at the end of it you rightly said you give the person two years what if within the two years they're not making enough to repay the mm. loans uh, how much you are giving um here, uh, I will have to thank the education president, mm. uh, His Excellency Danado Dankwa Kufuadu. During the 2016 campaign, mm. uh, he promised that if voted into power, he was going to increase the loan amount. And uh, he's done that. So uh, beginning of this academic year, the loan uh, before then, the maximum was 2000 now the maximum has mm. been increased to 3,000. Okay. So, yeah, the loan amount that you qualify for is $3,000 a CD. <laughs> that only will be dollars. Yeah, yeah, 3,000 mm. CDs okay. maximum. Right. Okay, but we have means testing that we use uh, to find out about your background, who you are, uh, and so on and so forth to okay. determine. Okay. So let's say if two people apply for the loan, they might not necessarily get the same amount. Right. Uh, you know, one can get about 3,000 CDs, and uh, maybe the other will get about... 1,005. 1,005, 2,500, okay. mm. based on the, the, the answers you gave for the means, means test. Very well. Mm. But do you calculate any interest on these loans they take? We, we, we have the, um, the lowest interest. Okay. As against, you know, the commercial loans uh, is 12 percent hmm. but looking at i mean I, i'm just trying to juxtapose this with our current economic situations mm -hmm. and the fact that you know how much people would usually receive when they're doing the national service so with this interest rate do you think it's easy for students who take this loan to repay within the two years oh it's not within the two years mm. i said that the repayment you don't pay for the first two years after graduation right okay then uh, the third year, that's when you start paying. Okay. So you don't have to pay. Uh, the, the oh, two so years. you're exempt within the first two the years first two after years graduating. After, yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay. the third year, mm. uh, the repayment kicks in okay. at that point. Right. Uh, but the, the amount of money our students pay 
is something that you can use to buy credit with mm. for to make a phone call okay. about 50 CDs and, and, and so on and so forth. Very well. So finally, how do you trace the borrowers and how do we, the public, help you in solving this whole repayment issue? Uh, tracing the borrowers um, admittedly uh, has become a problem mm. because uh, we don't have like national identification right. and uh, the addressing systems mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So uh, if a borrower changes address, their phone numbers, it becomes difficult to mm -hmm. uh, trace them. So we are pa doing we are doing data sharing, okay. partnering with other agencies okay. like uh, DVLA, mm -hmm. you know, uh, passport office, and such agencies. Okay so that uh, we can easily trace borrowers. Right. You know, though especially if we go to renew your driver's license, mm. we can know your current you know, address right. and then uh, try to reach out mm. to more borrowers. Right. We are also trying to, we are devising other strategies to even reach out to borrowers who have traveled outside, those uh, overseas. Okay. They are willing to pay, but uh, if you don't reach them, or if you don't give them mm. the platform to pay, it becomes it difficult. So we, we're working on all those. Very well. So finally, the fund doesn't fund itself. It is sourced by other, you know, income revenues. And I'm just wondering, in the case where repayments has become a big issue, do we still have money to be able to sustain some of the students who want these loans? The funding, our funding sources, mm. um, by the act that set up, you know, the fund, mm. we so we are to get up to 10% of all the inflows into get fund. We also get 1% uh, of telecommunication tax, talk mm. tax, and um, we also do our repayment to supplement. Mm. Yes, we are sustainable, okay. we, we, are, we, are, we are solvent. Mm. Um, but with the increase, as I indicated earlier, mm. Uh, is putting pressure on the fund. Okay. But we, we, we're going to, actually we're talking to the necessary stakeholders mm. to find means of um, making the fund more sustainable. sustainable, solvent. Because going into the future, mm -hmm. we need to brace ourselves for, let's say our, the free SHS mm -hmm. is going to impact the fund. It certainly yeah, will. 2020 and beyond. So we are being creative, thinking outside the box. Well, in that creativity, there are some students who say, well, the fund is in arrears, or they are not receiving their funding on time. And because they need that money to pay school fees, it's come up with a lot of issues. What do you say to that? We are also thinking outside the box as we trying to package mm. you know, other products okay. that could help students maybe pay their fees before you know, they, um, so we, we are looking, we do, it, it shouldn't be one size fits all. Right. We are looking at different packages to meet different needs. Okay. You know, so depending on the needs of the student, hmm. we packaging right. programs to, to, to suit them. them. Very well. And on that note, I have been speaking to the CEO of the Student Loan Trust Fund and the person of Nana Kweku AJ Yebwa. And I hope that as he's speaking to us, those students who benefited from the loan will repay so that others coming up can benefit from that loan.